Planning Board will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation can be found on the town website at www.sturbridge.gov slash town dash administrator slash pages slash how dash access dash dash virtual dash meeting. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to listen and or watch the meeting, uh, either online via the town's on-demand video broadcast, on cable television on channel 191, or dial into the meeting at 774-304-1455, enter 1428 pound for the meeting number, and 12345 for the access code. This phone number is only active for the public during public <coughs> meetings. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the uh, proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so despite best efforts, we will post audio and or video recording, transcripts, or other comprehensive record of the proceedings on the town's website as soon as possible after the meeting. The agenda tonight will be uh, starting with our acceptance of the October 13th uh, minutes. Uh, at 6.35, or as soon as they get here, we will have a presentation from CMRPT and the Housing Partnership, uh, a presentation on the Housing Production Plan. Following that, at approximately 6.50, We'll have a continued discussion of the Village Gateway District Bylaw, and then we have a, uh, a review of the recommendation for the town's right of first refusal for 44 Allen Road, and then after that we'll have town plan update, then all the new business and adjourn them. So, Mr. Blanchard? Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is Ed Neal. Uh, as the chairman of the Housing Partnership, we're going to have a quorum there tonight and uh, I just wanted to let you know that we're here as well as Gene and uh, the two representatives of CMRPC. Um, and uh, Wally Herzog, are you here? No, he's not here. Uh, Matt Sally, hey, are you there? No. I'm here. What? Wally's, Ed, are you here? Okay. Ed, Wally's here, but Matt is not here. So, so far it's just you and, okay. you and Wally and CMRPC. And we're not having a meeting. <laughs> See, we don't have a quorum. Well, we're the planning. Okay, very good. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. We still are going to be able to hear the presentation on the housing plan, and we have a quorum to take action if the no planning board wishes to do so. So yes. the first item on the agenda is the approval of the October 13th meeting. Has everyone had an opportunity to review the minutes? Any questions, comments, changes? Technicality on the page one where it says roll call vote. Couldn't that be six zero one? That is six one zero. I think. Yeah, it should. Correct. Yep, six zero one. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Okay, you want to make a motion then to uh, approve somebody? Russ? Kevin. Sue, okay. okay, great. Sue, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, is Chris here? Yes. No. No. Okay, Dane, how do you vote? Yes. Mike? Yes. Russ? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Can I vote yes. Very good. Okay, Gene, do you want to introduce CMRPC and we'll get the discussion going on the housing production plan? Yes, so this evening, uh, with us this evening, we have Emily Globitz from Central Mass Regional Planning Commission. She's the principal planner, as well as Ron Barron, and he's also, I believe, principal planner with Central Mass Regional Planning Commission. And they've been working with myself and um, Janae and the housing partnership on the preparation of our housing production plan. And we are pleased to be able to present this this evening to the planning board. And our ultimate goal is to hope that the planning board would vote to adopt this plan this evening. 
So Emily and Ron are, will make a presentation, answer any questions you have, and the, we have two members of the housing partnership here as well to answer any questions. Very good. Emily, would you like to uh, begin the discussion? Sure. Um, so I had sent Janae a presentation. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, I had sent Janae a presentation. I wasn't sure if on your end, uh, whoever's hosting this is going to uh, share the screen. Sure, we can do that. Give me one second. That'd be great. You should be. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I'll just let you know when to scroll through. <laughs> okay. So sorry, I'm going to try to keep this as brief as possible, um, about 10 minutes. Um, so we can probably just do questions at the end. I'll try to roll through this as quick as I can. Um, so we started this project about uh, a year ago, a little over a year ago. Um, the project partners are uh, myself and Ron. We're with the Central Mass Regional Planning Commission. Uh, we're your local regional planning agency. Um, we were also working with the Sturbridge Housing Partnership, um, who we mentioned two members are here tonight. They've been fantastic to work with, a great um, group of volunteers from the town, um, as well as the Sturbridge Planning Department. Thank you, Jean, for everything, and Janae. Um, to fund the creation of this plan to, uh, for CMRPC, uh, CPA funds um, were allocated at town meeting last year. Um, so that's just a quick background on this project. Do you want to scroll to the next slide? All right, here's also a just a brief overline of, uh, overview of the timeline. Um, we kicked off with some data collection um, in summer of last year. Um, you might have also seen we had a community survey out. Um, we had 278 responses to that, um, which was great. Um, and then, let's see here. Yeah, so that had questions on housing afford affordability, um, whether people intend to remain in the community, if they have the means to do so. Um, we got all kinds of community input on um, using the survey. Um, we also had a community forum back in February. We were able to fit that in right before we could no longer host uh, community meetings anymore due to COVID. Um, so that one, we had two sessions um, and overall we had about almost 50 attendees. And so we had a lot of questions at those meetings, a lot of interaction and uh, great participation from the, the people attending that meeting. Um, we also held a series of interviews with local stakeholders um, from the town and, and local committees and um, the uh, affordable housing communities. Um, so that was just another route of uh, public input that we took um, to formulate this, this community plan. Um, and then our timeline got pushed back a little bit due to COVID. Um, so we had to get a, a slight extension on this, but we're pretty much, we are on track to it, I mean, the plan is done. We're just now seeking uh, approval from the planning board, the select board, um, and then uh, approval and everything from DHCD to get this plan um, finalized. Okay, next slide, please. Um, so just quickly, um, a housing production plan, uh, it, it's a, a great way to like um, address unmeet unmet housing needs and demands, analyze uh, what the town has, what the town needs, where there's gaps, uh, who is in need of housing, um, what the affordability is like, um, and then using all the community input that we received, um, we established a set of uh, uh, clear goals and objectives um, uh, based on the input from everyone, um, which is used to guide the, the town in terms of housing for the next um, uh, about five years is, is how long the plan like lasts for. Um, yeah, uh, and then other other um, ways this plan will help the town help influence the type of housing that's needed, um, uh, encourage more diverse uh, creation of housing, 
uh, where the most appropriate location uh, for new, new housing would be. We had a, a really fun activity that we did during the public forum um, where we had these big maps and people pointed out which areas of the town they thought uh, certain housing would, would really fit in with the character um, and where it would not, where there's maybe sewer and where there's not, um, all kinds of things. So that was a really great way to generate conversation about the future of housing in the town. Um, and then there's also the 40B and um, preventing a, a comprehensive permitting side to this plan, which I'll get into in a little bit if you want to Go to the next slide. I also just wanted to quickly highlight a few data points. Um, we did a lot of data collection and analysis, so um, I would hate to leave this out. Um, so basically, the town of Sturbridge, the population we found, is aging. Um, residents are getting older. Um, people might be moving, younger people might be moving towards um, more urban centers, job centers. Um, also, people might not be able to, uh, younger folks might not be able to move into the town um, due to the, the lack of rentals, um, the, uh, the pricey uh, single family homes. And the, bottom, the bottom bullet here says um, we found the median sale price of a single family home in 2018 was 320000 which if you're, you've never owned a home before, that's, that's a challenge to get into the to the housing market. Um, and that's significantly higher than uh, a lot of the surrounding towns. Um, so Sturbridge is, it's not a cheap town to live in. I'm sure <laughs> you're all very aware of that. Um, uh, so that's kind of why the, um, it's important to emphasize the need for affordable housing in Sturbridge. Um, we also found that the rental vacancy rate has decreased. Uh, it was in, it was at 6% in 2010. It's down to essentially 0% um, is what we found. So not only is there uh, a lack of rental units, but the, the demand is also there for them. So um, it's an important thing to know. Um, yeah, another note is that uh, one quarter of families we found are cost burden and half of low income families are cost burden. Cost burden implies that you're spending over 30% um, of your annual uh, income on housing and housing related costs. Um, all right, so next slide. All right, this is this is the fun part. <laughs> so I'm just going to quickly go over Chapter 40B. Um, so the, Chapter 40B is a Massachusetts law that mandates that every town uh, or city in Massachusetts has to have 10 percent or more of its housing stock qualify as affordable for those earning 80% or less of the area median income. So um, the area that Sturbridge is in, uh, Worcester County, the area median income, or AMI, is 98,200. Um, let's see. So a family of uh, four um, who has a combined income um, of 79,000 annual household income um, would be able to qualify for affordable housing. Um, so it's important to note there's often a stigma around who qualifies for affordable housing and who is living uh, in in these homes. And it's it's really it's your next door neighbor. It's um, you know it's people who have been raised here, grew up here. Um, these are really middle class um, families um, who either want to live here, move into town or have been here their entire lives and are facing the fact that they might be getting priced out, um, especially for seniors who might, you know, be living in a large single family um, home and can no longer upkeep the, the um, yeah, the home. There's too many rooms. Um, yeah, so they want to kind of downsize and, and live in senior housing, um, but can't afford it. So, it's really important to, to keep that in mind when we're talking about affordable housing. Um, so chapter 40B um, uh, da, 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 uh, provides opportunities for developers to bypass local zoning in towns that are under the 10% threshold. So currently, um, Durbridge is at 5.6, 
5% um, of affordable housing. So you are under the threshold. Um, so if a developer had a project and included a certain percentage of uh, affordable units in their um, uh, in their proposed development, they could bypass local zoning to get that developed. Um, this is called comprehensive permitting. Um, however, there's a way to um, kind of prevent this from happening. Um, it's, uh, it's by passing this, this uh, plan and creating a certain number of affordable units each year um, that will give the town safe harbor is what it's called, and that can prevent these undesired uh, 40B developments from happening. Um, yeah, go into the next slide, please. So I tried to break this down <laughs> as easy as possible, but this is essentially the production goals that we've established in this plan um, that would allow the town to uh, achieve safe harbor. Um, and prevent comprehensive permitting. So these are just goals. It's important to, to keep in mind that the town's not going to be punished or, or anything if, if you don't achieve these uh, production goals. Um, so the breakdown is that um, the town has, as of the 2000 census, also it's important to note that these numbers are going to change soon when the 2020 census is released. Um, Everything right here is based off the 2010 census. So the plan is going to need to be updated. At least these numbers will be need to be updated uh, once 2020 is released. Um, so the town, as of 2010, has 3,759 uh, housing units. Um, let's see. 10%, um, the 10% target for this would be 376 affordable housing units. Uh, currently, the town only has 209. So that's a pretty decent-sized gap right there. Um, if the town creates 0.5% uh, per year, that's 19 affordable housing units per year, um, then with the approved housing production plan, um, the town would ab be able to achieve safe harbor. Or alternatively, if the town creates 38 uh, subsidized housing units per year or 1% over the course of two years, that also would qualify the, the town because um, obviously there aren't development, developments happening every single year. Sometimes it takes a little while. So just important to lay this out. Um, I want uh, this to just be clear to everyone. Um, I think that's it for my slides. Is there anything left? Do you want to go on to the next slide? Yeah, I think that was good. Yeah, we okay, yeah. I think that, that's pretty much... Um, I, I welcome questions. I think Ron is here, too. Sorry, I can't <laughs> tell who's on this call right now. But um, but also, Jean can answer any questions, too. So, so basically, we're seeking uh, the planning board approval of the plan tonight, uh, of the housing production plan tonight. Very, very good. Thank you, Emily. It was a good presentation and a very good plan. Jean, do you have anything you'd like to add before I ask the uh, uh, board members uh, uh, if they have any questions? Um, no, not really. I think it was just an important point that Emily made that, you know, there's no penalty if we don't create those, either the 19 or the, I believe, 38 units. Um, every year or every two years, there's no penalty for that. So it's really just something that we can work to try to achieve as, as close or as many units as we can in a given year. Very good, thank you. Sue, do you have any comments or questions? No, I don't. Okay, thank you. Dane? No. All right. A mic? Uh, none, no. Okay, very good. Uh, Russ? No, well, all set. Yeah? Yeah. No, qu no questions. Okay, great. And once again, I'd just like to say I, I think it's a very good plan. Ed, uh, do you have anything you'd like to add on behalf of the uh, House of Partnership Committee? Yes, I'd like to uh, thank Emily and Ron for their work on behalf of CMRPC and uh, Jean for her very hard work during this whole process. Very good. Thank you. We certainly appreciate all the work uh, you and your committee put in as, as well as CMRPC. 
Uh, could we have a motion then for the uh, planning board to uh, vote to adopt the uh, housing production plan? Yeah, move. Oh, move. Russell? Uh, Russell moves. Uh, Sue second? Yes. Okay. Sue, how do you vote? Yes. Um, Dane? Yes. Mike? Yes. Russ? Yes. Jeff? Yes. I vote yes. Very good. Well, again, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank Take you care, so Emily. much. I appreciate it. Bye, Ron. Okay. Next item we have is the discussion on the Village Gateway District. And I think we're going to be joined by uh, Dave Patel, Patrick Doherty, and Michael Jacobs. I, I see that I think Patrick is here. I know the other. Oh, there's Jay. So, uh, Jean, do you want to start off on this and just introduce what's happening here? Yes. <clears throat> so the last time that we met and, and discussed the proposed changes to the Village Gateway District, you'll remember that the request by Mr. Patel was that fast food restaurants be allowed by special permit in the Village Gateway District. And secondly, that the board consider um, eliminating the square footage requirement in the definition of fast casual. So after that meeting, you had asked that we get together and we discuss this and try to provide the board with some data. So we did just that. I met with Mike Jacobs, and he provided me with a variety of articles. And then additionally, I did send the board the report. Sorry, my pages are stuck together. The National Restaurant Association Restaurant Industry 2030, Actionable Insights for the Future. And the interesting thing about the um, restaurant industry 2030 was that the plan was actually prepared in November 2019, so it was prior to COVID. So I thought it was pretty interesting to read that in conjunction with the articles that Mr. Jacobs had provided. So really, if you've had the opportunity to read through some of these articles, you see that um, Mr. Jacobs and Mr. Patel were exactly right. They are predicting that we are going to have smaller footprints, we are going to have more drive-throughs, multiple drive-throughs in, in some locations, um, and uh, touchless, contactless delivery, curbside pickup spaces are going to be the norm. So I, I do agree with everything that uh, Mr. Jacobs, Mr. Patel, and Mr. Doherty had indicated to the board after doing this research and being able to meet with them and spend some time and discuss some of these um, issues. And then actually I am now on a mailing list for the quick service restaurant industry and just today I got an interesting article, Mr. Jacobs, I'm not sure if you received it, but it talked about Burger King actually building their restaurants above drive through so that people could drive through and meals actually be delivered on conveyor belts. So. I think the industry is certainly evolving. Um, we might not see that here in Sturbridge for some time, but um, I do agree that it would be pretty arbitrary to try to give you a square footage. So recommend to you, for instance, we'd go from 4,000 to 2,700 square feet. I just don't feel confident in giving you a number. I do feel confident in saying that I think that the differentiation in our definition of fast casual versus fast food is sufficient to allow us to identify who is indeed a fast casual restaurant. And you'll remember that is um, kind of indicated by the quality of food, the type of food, less processed food, less frozen food, sometimes the service of alcohol, and just kind of the even the interiors of the buildings are uh, a bit nicer. And I think as a final thought, everyone needs to remember, and as we go to town meeting, um, the voters need to remember, is the architectural standards will not change. So the beautiful buildings that Mr. Patel has built already will continue to this new building on the corner. So with that in mind, I'm not, I don't necessarily believe that it, people will care too much what type of food is being served out of the building, as long as it's the you know, same architectural style and high standards that we've seen on that whole corner. So with that, if the board has any questions, we're all here to answer them. And if not, I would just recommend that the board vote to be petitioner to see if the town would vote to amend the zoning bylaw in two manners, by number one, amending chapter 27, section 2704, subparagraph B, by inserting a number seven, fast food establishment. So that would be fast food by special permit in the Village Gateway District 
and a fast food establishment does allow for a drive through provided it meets the drive through standards in the bylaw. The second amendment would be to see if the town would vote to amend the zoning bylaw in the following manner, which would be amending the definition of fast casual found in chapter two by deleting the strike through language as shown below. In the strike through language in the definition I've given you is I'm proposing that we eliminate the language that says that is at least 4,000 square feet in area. So then the language would merely say an establishment which serves food or beverages and the rest of that definition would stay intact. So that would be uh, my recommendation and Mr. Jacobs, Mr. Doherty and Mr. Patel are all here if you have any questions and I'm happy to answer any questions as well. Okay, Jane, thank you. I think that's, you know, very clear. Um, why don't I just go through and see if anyone has any questions. Sue, do you have any questions on it? No, I do not at this time. Okay, great. Dane? I don't, but I'd like to thank Jane for her diligence and research. Very good. I agree. Thank you. Mike? Yeah, I agree. I agree with Dane. Um, you know, it's great to, for us to take a look at the data and then also see what's happening in the future and make decisions based on that. So, um, no, no other questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, Russ? No, I agree with what everybody's saying. I, I appreciate all the information. It was, uh, it was very helpful. Um, we're in a changing world now, so uh, and this just uh, amplifies that, the, uh, the data that Gene supplied to us. So I'm good. Very good. Um, and Jeff? No questions. Okay, very good. And I have no other questions. So then uh, if we could get a motion then, um, as Jean recommends here, for the planning board to serve as the petitioner for the proposed changes that was just present, that were just pre uh, presented to us. Um, and she notes that uh, uh, the timing it would be for a public hearing and so forth. So can we have a motion then to become the petitioner for these two changes to the uh, bylaw? So moved, Sue. Sue, very good. A second? second, Mike. Okay, Mike, thank you. Um, Sue, how do you vote? Yes. Jane? Yes. Mike? Yes. Russ? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Can I vote yes. Very good. Thank you. Um, Jay, Michael, and uh, Patrick, thank you very much for your help on this. I think this uh, worked out very well. Anything you'd like to add? We're all set, I think. Oh, we all appreciate that. You know, we only reason we came because we saw the change coming and we wanted to make sure we develop the corner and finish the development. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Welcome. Good night. Thank you, Jay. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Okay, uh, next, I think the town administrator is looking for a recommendation uh, from the planning board on the right of first refusal for 44 Allen Road. Jean, do you want to go over that? Yes. So you'll see in your packet, I provided a copy of the information that was submitted to Mr. Bridges. And this is for property located at 44 Allen Road. And um, the property is owned by Mr. Holdcraft, and it is in Chapter 61A. So Ethan and Erica Hillman actually own the lot right next door to it, and it's a little shy of being a developable lot. So Mr. Holdcraft is planning or proposing to sell a little over 8,000 square feet to his neighbors for $10,000. So we, as required, have a copy of the purchase and sale agreement, and there are maps um, included in your packet. And the letter from his attorney, Nancy Codere. And I am recommending that the board notify the town administrator that we should not be exercising our right of first refusal for this small portion of land. Okay, Jean, thank you. Um, I, I think that makes sense. Does anyone have any questions or concerns about that on Je the planning board? Oh, Jeff? Just a comment, Mr. Chair. Uh, I sent this to KP Law, um, and they uh, told me there's two small deficiencies oh. with the notice. It may not be, uh, you know, it may not be fatal, but the there's no certification from the owner that it's a tr true and complete copy of the purchase and sale agreement. 
and the address of the owner is not included on the letter. So I reached out to Mr. Hillman to get that information, uh, but I think the intent of the letter is clear, um, but just a comment. Okay, fine. I, yeah, I, I think that uh, uh, is true. It doesn't really change the nature of you know what the issue is. Uh, so do we have a motion then for the uh, planning board to recommend that we not uh, exercise our right of first removal. Uh, I'll move Russell. First removal. <laughs> Russell, thank you. Uh, and second. Mike, second. Second. Mike, thank you. Um, Sue, how do you vote? Yes. Dane? Yes. Mike? Yes. Russ? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Can I vote yes? Very good. Thank you. Okay, next we have the town planner update. Okay, so I think um, Mr. Daniel was going to be joining us this evening, but I don't see him here. Um, but I, at the last planning board meeting, somebody did ask the question if we knew where Rap Scallion was moving their new tap room. And I didn't have the information at that time, and I do now. They are now planning to move to the building at 484 and 3, 484 Main and 3 Arnold Road, and that is the red building across the Arnold Road from the Senior Center, and Homefield Brew is in the downstairs. They are proposing to operate in the second floor, which was the Pink House Antiques had been there for some time, and they will plan on having no more than 49 individuals there. There are two bathrooms. One is handicap accessible, and the, the only real modifications will be installing a walk-in cooler in a side room. And the exterior of the structure will not change. They plan to be open seven days a week with their hours starting around noon and closing at around 9 or 10. They had hoped to be selling the same products as in their current location with the beer, wine, and cider. Um, it does not appear they will be selling the cans of beer to go because of a limitation on the licenses that we have available for retail sales in the in the town so they are they will be going to the abcc and the board of selectmen for a pouring license and they will not be doing production in this location um, so they will fall under the specialty food and beverage operation and not the pub brew so they do have to serve food so they are planning right now to um, receive their food from home field downstairs and also have a food truck on premises so that they can have food for their operation so that they would meet the definition of specialty food and beverage. There is sufficient parking on site. I've given you the parking breakdown for this mixed use plaza. And I do believe that when Rapscallion and Homefield are at their busiest, all the other offices will pretty much be closed. There's a law office, a florist, a massage therapist, and there's a hair salon. And there is also one residential unit on premises. So I've given you that breakdown. So that's really just um, by way of updating you. And Mr. Daniel is on the uh, meeting if you have any questions for him. And then I think just point of clarification, we have um, a few newer board members and I just wanted to explain the difference between when I put something in my town plan or update versus when I have somebody come in for a waiver of site plan if that's okay Charlie sure go ahead Jean so with a waiver of site plan I normally will require an applicant to go through that process when there hasn't been a same or similar use on the premises if there's something that I'm putting in my update to you it's because a the property was approved as a mixed-use plaza so there they could have had any type of mixture of uses that would meet the parking requirements or there was a same or similar use in the premises so that's the differences so tonight you'll see the tap room at three arnold road and at the next which is just in my update and at the next meeting you'll see the um, pizza restaurant that's coming in for 29 brookfield road and i'm having them come in for a waiver because it was prior to that a canine training location and retail so i just wanted to clarify um, the differences because i've been asked by not only board members but applicants so i thought it just was important to note and that's all i have i'm happy to answer any questions and like i said mr daniel is here as well okay very good Sue, you have a question 
Yes, I have a question. The um, second floor, it, does it have the fire extinguishers and the systems in place for patron safety? Yes, it will. everything will have to meet um, health codes, building codes, and fire codes as well. And we'll need to get that occupancy permit before they can open their establishment. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Good. Any other questions? I can go down the list if you like. Dane, do you have any questions? Uh, I do. I understand the parking differentiation, and I do agree there's a strong argument for non-coincidental time usage, but I was wondering if those spaces are clearly marked on the site. Um, I haven't been over there in a little while, but I recall that it's more like a few spaces scattered around the property than clearly delineated aisle and parking. So we might want to ask if they could paint some lines to encourage clear and proper usage, because I do hope that there is a lot more through traffic on this property uh, as a result of this. Yes, I agree yeah, with that's you. That's a good point. I've actually met with the property owner, and I don't know if you've been there recently, but you'll notice that he's done a lot of improvements and really has been cleaning up the location. And we did talk about the need to delineate the parking spaces there, but I can just kind of reaffirm that with him. And uh, Cedric, maybe you could mention that as well when you're speaking with your landlord. Very good. Thank you. Mike? Uh, no questions, no. Okay, thanks, Russ. Uh, the, only, the only question I would have, uh, one of them was the, uh, the delineating in the parking spaces, but uh, nighttime lighting in that parking lot, I don't think there's much there. I don't know if something can be added to the building just to illuminate that, that parking lot at night since he's going to be open until looks like 9 or 10 o'clock at night. So maybe that could be looked at too, to add a couple of lights with safety. That's all. Good point. Very good. Thank you. Jeff? No questions. And I'm all set with the two. Cedric, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, I think. Everything's good. Very good. Well, thank you, and good luck. Welcome. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. We have you stay here. Very good. Gene, yeah. anything else? Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Uh, no, just the next meeting is uh, November 8th, and we, uh, I expect to have 29 Brookfield Road, the waiver of site plan for the new pizza, George's Pizza. That plan's on locating in there. He came in this afternoon. And I helped him with some paperwork, and he's hoping to get everything submitted tomorrow. Just so the board is aware, I am on vacation next week, so I will not be doing a report until Monday prior to the meeting. It's just the way it fell this time. Usually that doesn't happen. But uh, you won't see anything from me until Monday, because other than doing the MVP meeting next Wednesday, I'm hoping not to look at my email. So... <laughs> Very good. Enjoy your vacation. Oh, right. the meeting's the 10th, excuse me. <laughs> the meeting's the 10th. I'll be back on the 9th. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, next we have old and new business. Sue, do you have any old or new business? Yes, I have a question about the um, renovation of that property next to the um, dental facility on Route 20. Yes. And where the studios for crafts are suppo it's supposed to be in the one apartment. Am I correct? Yes. How's that coming along? It's coming along very well. I, I actually haven't been in the interior, but if you've driven by the exterior, you can uh, look in and note that they've added new doors. You can see looking in, it's pretty hollow. They've really gutted the facility out and they seem to be moving along quite well and getting it buttoned up for the colder weather so that they can then start to really focus on the inside. But I expect they'll move along pretty quickly. They they have with the other projects they've done in town. They were on the roof today. They, they had the roof stripped today. So. Mm. Oh, Sorry, okay. So they're moving. Is, am I accurate in saying about the four craftsmen studios that will be upstairs in the one apartment downstairs? I'm not sure that the one, I think the one apartment is upstairs and I think the other four, I think the other four are on the main floor and then the one regular residential unit upstairs. 
but I could have that upside down without having the plan in front of me. Yeah. So um, are there any potential people who are interested in filling those four craft artist, artist rooms, studios? I, I really wouldn't know, but I do know when they did the, the former Briar Patch location, they actually had too many people for that one unit, which is why they started doing right. this. So, so I'm hopeful that it will be easy for them to rent. Good. Very good. Anything else, Sue? Thank you, Jane. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you, Jane. Any okay. older new business? I was curious how the pilot travel uh, construction is going. I know they had some issues with their fire water source and they were thinking about dewatering a pond. Yes, so they, they still need to go back to the Conservation Commission for that, but it's not holding up the rest of the work and they are still working. And then I guess to follow up on the traffic issue that came up at the last meeting, I did speak to the Chief of Police and he indicated that they're ticketing a lot of people as an educational um, kind of tool. They're working with Pilot now to um, put signage on the entirety of the street, no parking. So what they're doing is when they see a trailer truck park there, they're going up, they're talking to the person and kind of giving them a warning, ticketing them and letting them know that there won't be any parking allowed on the street. And speaking with the chief, he realizes that, you know, it's going to be quite difficult if they can't get into the location. We may still have some people parking, but we're all hopeful that once the renovations or the reconstruction is done, that that will really eliminate a lot of the problems we're having on that street. Thank you. Very good. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Mike, any old or new business? Uh, none, no. I think. Russell? I was just going to ask about Pilot and, uh, and also thank Gene for the setting up that walkthrough at the uh, Pine Lake Resort. Uh, it was very informative, and uh, you've done an excellent job there. So that's all I have. Very good. Thank you, Russ. Jeff? Nothing. Okay, and I don't have any old or new. So with that, we have a motion to adjourn. So moved. So second. Okay, no. Mike, second. Mike. Okay, Mike. Second. Yeah. Sue, how are you? Oh. Yes. Uh, Dane? Yes. Mike? Yes. Russ? Yes. Jeff? Yes. I vote yes. Very good. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your vacation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.